Good afternoon. My name is Herman Moreno, and I'm very delighted and thankful to be here this morning and this afternoon to speak with you all. Um, I wanted to start by just dedicating this speech to my mother, who right now is in El Salvador uh, celebrating Mother's Day, which there is celebrated May 10th every year. So let me be the first to say happy early Mother's Day to any mothers in the audience. <laughs> When I was a child, ever since I was a child, I've always been a dreamer and a goal setter. I've been driven, I've been focused, but I've also been naive. I grew up living in a modest one bedroom apartment where people slept in beds made of blankets on the ground in order to accommodate the two families sharing the same crowded space. I would sit at the window and watch smoke billow out of the buildings, out of the chimneys of the fancy houses across the street. My vivid imagination led me to believe that smoke was where clouds came from. I even convinced my younger brother that this was true. I still remember the look of desire in his eyes as we looked across the field and watched that smoke coming out of those chimneys and watched in amazement. I would tell him, one day we'll have chimneys. We'll be creating our own clouds. I would tell him that we could be whatever we wanted. We just had to dream it, believe it, and then work hard to achieve it. I remain a dreamer to this day. In fact, this tendency to dream has always been quite extraordinary, especially considering the circumstances. How could the son of a single, undocumented mother who was raising three kids alone and fighting tooth and nail to escape poverty have the braziness to think that anything was possible and that he would be creating clouds one day? My dreams became my protection mechanism. Despite facing adversities, I learned at a young age that hope is a gift and resilience is a muscle. It can be developed. It can be strengthened. My mother modeled that resilience for me and my brothers. She instilled it in us. Resilience allowed us to survive. It taught us how to face challenges head on, how to work well under pressure and under stress. All those skills continue to serve me well today in my classroom. I am a first-generation immigrant from El Salvador. I grew up in Amherst, Massachusetts, and attended college there at UMass. Back in 2008, I received my bachelor's degree in sociology. But after graduating, I really struggled to figure out what I was going to do with it and what I was going to do with my life. Complacency sort of took over, and I found myself in a stagnant state. Working in a restaurant as a server and as a bartender, I was quickly approaching my 30s, and I felt unhappy with where I was in life and I felt like I needed to do something drastic to reinvent myself. So on a whim, two and a half years ago, I decided to move to Seattle, a city where I didn't know anyone. I didn't have a job lined up or even a permanent place to live. All I brought with me was my dreams and my very strong desire to be better, to become someone, and to make my own clouds. I knew I was interested in making a difference, but I just didn't know how. When a simple search for teacher training programs led me to the Seattle Teacher Residency, I was immediately intrigued by STR's focus on equity and on social justice. I applied and a few months later was accepted to my disbelief. On the day I received my acceptance letter, I must have read it a hundred times to make sure it was real. STR believed in me during a time when I'm not really sure I believed in myself. The program granted me an opportunity to enter a very difficult but rewarding profession, and it offered me a master's degree, which was something that made my mother and my whole family very proud. Most importantly, though, becoming a teacher through the SDR program gave me the meaning and the purpose that I was seeking. It solidified my decision to move here. During my residency, I was matched with the most incredible mentor teacher, Tia Wen. I was in her classroom from before the school year started up until the very last day of school. I was there for the good days and for the really, really hard days. I was able to see firsthand the power of forming relationships with students. I experienced the thrill of seeing a student have an epiphany when they finally understand a new math strategy, or the joy of knowing that you helped a child fall in love with reading. I saw how a classroom is supposed to function and just how much time, effort, and thought goes behind each lesson. Ms. Wen modeled for me that teaching is the utmost form of social justice, and she showed me the importance of establishing a community and ensuring that students feel safe in your classroom. 
her philosophies and core practices of equitable teaching are directly aligned with SDR's core values and vision. I began my residency working with individual students, then small groups, and eventually the whole class. The 14-month preparation period was intensive. It was challenging, especially for me. Everything I was learning was new. This intensity was part of what prepared me to survive my first year of teaching. This year, I'm teaching fourth grade at Lowell Elementary up on Capitol Hill. Despite the fact that Lowell is steps away from million dollar condos and homes, some with chimneys, that is not the reality that many of my students go home to. In fact, only about 7% of our student body actually live on Capitol Hill. Most of our students are bused in and about a third of our student population is homeless or in transitional housing. When I started this year, I had 26 students, nine of whom were coming from shelters around the city. These students would arrive to school in the morning with a fight or flight mentality. And I knew I needed to honor that mentality because it was their reality. It was what they needed to survive. But I also knew that I needed to create a safe, place, a safe space for them, even just in my classroom. They struggled with sharing school supplies. They wouldn't leave their things in their lockers or in their desks, even just for recess or lunch, for fear that it would be gone by the time I got back. After a few months, these habits faded away, and I knew that they had begun to start to feel safe in my classroom. Access to resources is often a problem at my school. My students are expected to bring in all of their own supplies, including basic things like pencils and lined paper. Given our student population, this isn't always possible. So I've learned to be resourceful, as Ms. Wen taught me. You can ask any of my students what goose paper means, and they can all tell you, good on one side. <laughs> Our computers are outdated, and they often turn off on students in the middle of projects. When I brought my students up to the computer lab for the first time this year, they asked me basic questions like, how do I get to the next line? Or how do I make a capital a capital? This lack of access to technology at home and at school means that many will struggle to be prepared for te the technology-focused world just steps away from them. Another challenge I experienced this year was my range and ability of my students. I had some fourth graders who began this year reading at a kindergarten level, and only four students that were at or above grade level. STR prepared me for this challenge by showing us the importance of differentiation based on student need and ability and giving us the tools and the strategy to meet, to meet each student where they are at. Despite these challenges and many more, beautiful and amazing things are happening in my classroom and around my school every single day. I'm proud to say that all of my students have achieved growth in reading and math, and many more will complete this year at grade level. Not all triumphs I have witnessed this year have strictly been academic. In late November, I received a new student who had already been to four different schools this academic year. He had lost both of his parents and was placed with another family member who then became homeless. During the first few weeks, things were really tough for him. They were tough for the class and they were really tough for me. There were some days when I had to evacuate the classroom up to four times in order to keep the rest of my class safe. This student was easily triggered and would scream profanities and throw anything that was within hand's reach. I am fairly certain he was used to hearing the words, get out of my classroom, or maybe even get out of my school. But what this student was not used to hearing was that his teachers loved him. And that is what I started to tell him. No matter how bad of a day it was, I told him, I believe in you, and I'll see you tomorrow. I told him that I had a lot of love for him. Eventually, he began to believe me. As he understood that I believed in him, he began to believe in himself. I know teachers are not supposed to have favorites, but this student is such a delight, and just seeing him grow and learn inspires me every single day. A few weeks ago, he told me that his head hurt when I was dismissing the class at the end of the day. Concerned, I asked him what had happened at recess. Did he fall? But he simply answered, no. My head hurts from learning so much. I'm not saying that things are perfect now and that he still doesn't have his bad days. He's 10, he's going through a lot, but he's made remarkable progress. And I'm, proud to, and I'm proud of everything that he has already accomplished. 
My students are resilient, they're brilliant, they are change makers, and we have truly become a community of learners. I teach my students to be empathetic with one another and to be critical and free thinkers. I teach them to be dreamers, just like I was. I teach them to shoot for the sky. I often remind them that I'm learning just as much from them as they are from me. My work as a teacher has become the piece that is making me whole, a piece which I never knew I was missing. During a recent conversation with my younger brother, we discussed that memory of the chimney smoke and the clouds, and I like to say that I, I like to think that I'm finally creating the clouds that I was dreaming about as a kid. I'd like to end with a quote by Sonia Sotomayor that I hold very dear to my heart. And I discuss this quote often with my students. It says, you cannot value dreams according to the odds of their coming true. The real value is in stirring within us the will to aspire. I tell my students that anything is possible. They can see that just by looking at their teacher. My hope is that all of my students will leave my classroom with that will to aspire and the confidence and the hope to know that they too can create clouds out of smoke. Thank you.